Welcome to this service coming from the congregation of Martha Evangelist, the Uniting Church in North Melbourne. This service is for Sunday, June the 14th, the first of the Sundays in the Mid-Year Ordinary Cycle. The Lord be with you. Come, come and call upon the name of the Lord. Come and call upon the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, gracious Lord of all, whose glory knows no bounds, we worship and adore you. Jesus Christ, the Son, eternal word of God, whose mercy knows no ends, we worship and adore you. Most good and loving spirit, source of power and life whose goodness lasts forever, we worship and adore you. And we pray, come to us. Come and make this time for us a new encounter with your divine love. Where our spirits are poor and empty, fill us with your promised kingdom. Where we bear grief and loss, bring comfort and hope where we carry the burden of sin, relieve us. Come that we, might, that we might know that you are God, that we are your people, the sheep of your pasture. In the name of your good shepherd we pray. Amen. Scripture readings today come from 1 Peter. We're a little bit off the lectionary today, just finishing off our series on 1 Peter. And while we still had a bit of chapter 4 to, to hear and the first part of 5, I've gone to the end of chapter 5 as a kind of summation of all that is that Peter is saying to us in his letter. The psalmist celebrates that God has heard the poet's voice and responded with grace. And from Matthew's gospel, the set gospel reading for today, Jesus commissions and sends his 12 disciples. We listen for the word of God in the hearing of the scriptures. A reading from 1 Peter 5, verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, 
so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen and establish you. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. Through Silvanus, whom I consider a faithful brother, I have written this short letter to encourage you and to, to testify that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. Your sister church in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings. And so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. Some verses from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanite, And Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse the lepers. 
cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Listen to a summary of statements from 1 Peter. Set all hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring. Be holy. Love one another deeply. Rid yourselves of all malice. Let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. Abstain freely from freshly from abstain from fleshly desires. Conduct yourselves honorably. Live as free people. Have unity of spirit, sympathy, and love. A tender heart and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil. Sanctify Christ as Lord. Keep your conscience clear. Live no longer by earthly desires, but by the will of God. Be hospitable. Speak and act as stewards of God's grace. Entrust yourself to the faithful creator. Humble yourselves, casting all anxiety on God. Resist the devil. This is a charge that Peter puts to his people. And in summary, the charge is nothing less than be extraordinary. Know what you are and then become that thing. You are of God in Christ. Be then what you are, where you are. In this, Peter calls his people not to that kind of extraordinary, which is the 10 million views on YouTube, the freak event, the apparently miraculous timing, or the just plain stupid. Peter's be extraordinary is the call to change our sense of what is ordinary, our sense of what is proper and appropriate, and to live according to that new sense. We learn a sense from what is appropriate in the home, at school, in our engagements, at work, and through other aspects of human society. And much of that, of course, is very good. Yet Peter's be extraordinary is not to say, be what you have learned to be from the breast, but rather be as Jesus was. Jesus whose death seemed to his killers to be just what they had long learned to be appropriate. For Jesus' death was in this way an entirely ordinary thing. It was just the cogs in the machine of one particular human society grinding on, producing what that machine is supposed to produce, which includes not a little death, of things that don't seem sufficiently ordinary or appropriate. The death of the one who doesn't fit, of the one who is not valued. Peter's be extraordinary is a call to be willing to be Jesus in our own particular time and space. Do not be surprised, he then reminds them, that this is hard work. There is death in the machine and you can't fix it. But even if you can't fix it, you don't have to fear it. You don't have to be forced by it to become less than what God calls you to be. A fearless life is not necessarily a long one or even a wholly happy life. It is simply a life which knows where we have come from and what we are here for. We have come from the God who calls us into being. This is not a mere calling into existence. It's the call which God issues to those who are capable of hearing and responding, or perhaps not. We are when we respond to God. Peter's people have heard this call. They've received themselves from God through Jesus and now see themselves in the work of Jesus. Here in him is the new and better ordinary, the new way to be in the world. We are here then that we might become that new ordinary, that, of course, 
extraordinary. We are here as an answer to the question, where is God? We usually ask this question in such a way as to imagine that the answer might be, oh, God is just over there. But Peter's answer is that God is there in the life of Jesus. And wherever that life finds an echo in our lives, God is present in humble acceptance, in the gentle word, in the grace which releases. God is there when God's people speak and act as if the God of grace, as we saw last week. Do these things for the remembrance of me. To know what we are, that we are of the God of grace, and to become this, humble yet fearless, merciful yet strong. This is God's call to us in Peter's letter. It's all rather simple then, despite the marvellous doctrines we might pluck here and there from the letter. It's all rather simple. We have a charge to keep. Let us then, as Peter counsels, humble ourselves, cast our cares on God, keep alert and resist the constant temptation to be any less than the very good God seeks in us. And we may find that this is enough. Let us pray. We bless you, O God, for you have created and sustained us and all things for your own name's sake, that we might glorify and enjoy you forever. And yet we confess that in thought, word and deed, we have failed to bring you glory. Forgive us when we look for you in places other than where you promised to be, in the lives of the humble and the gracious. Forgive us when the call to live such lives is more than we want to hear, and we listen hard for other invitations. Forgive us then, when lack of humility has pushed away those whom humility might have brought closer when lack of mercy has demanded more than another could give, when lack of tenderness has broken what might have been preserved. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast love and faith, and through your grace may we proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. Just so, gracious God, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. God's love for us is proved in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us freeing us from death's grip and giving us access to grace and peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear then God's word of grace to us in Christ. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The peace of the Lord be with you all. 
We confess the faith of the church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We move to the Lord's table. Christ our Lord invites to his table those who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, who seek to live in peace with one another. Jesus says to us, Come to me, all you who labour and are bearing heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am humble and gentle in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give our thanks and praise, O God, for your love has been poured into our hearts through your Holy Spirit given to us. Nothing is too wonderful for you, and with a word you brought all creation to birth. You revealed yourself to our forebears, Abraham and Sarah, sharing around the table with them and promising them the fruits of their withered dreams. The fulfillment of your promises came in your child, Jesus, who revealed your compassion for the people, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing the sick and the broken of all that afflicted them. In the fullness of love, he gave his life for us, that while we are yet lost in our sin, you raised him from the dead, and now through our faith in him, you justify us and welcome us to the table of grace. And so we praise you with the faithful of every time and place, joining with choirs of angels and the whole creation in the eternal hymn. Come, 
We give you thanks, great God, that on the night before he met with death, Jesus came to the table with those he loved. He took bread and praised you, God of all creation. He broke the bread among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body. In the same way, after supper, he took a cup of wine and gave you thanks, God of all creation. He passed the cup among his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of a new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many. Do this as often as you drink it, in the remembrance of me. Gracious God, as we offer you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we commemorate Jesus, your Son. Death could not bind him, for you raised him up in the spirit of holiness and exalted him as Lord of creation. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. God of grace, send to us your Holy Spirit that the bread broken and the cup blessed may be holy, and through them your people might become one. Unite us in faith, inspire us to love, encourage us with hope that we may receive Christ as he comes to us in these tokens. God of grace, your people praise you. Blessing and honor, glory and love are yours forevermore. Lord, you are with us as we proclaim the good news, as we reach out to heal, to cure, to raise up. You are with us as we battle against evil. Being bound with Christ, we are confident then to pray for this world. We pray for the church throughout the world, for all involved in mission and outreach. We pray for this congregation and for Hotham Mission. We pray for the National Uniting Church Assembly, for our President, Deirdre, and our General Secretary, Colleen. We pray for the World Council of Churches, the National Council of Churches, and the Victorian Council of Churches. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. You have called us together to work. We pray for the work of the United Nations. We remember those who are seeking to build up communities. We pray for those in government and the leaders of industry. We pray for those who have a sense of vocation and dedication. We pray for those whose work is thwarted by the greed or the violence of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have called us to a knowledge of you. We pray for those who have sacrificed for us, those who love us and those whom we love. We give thanks for all who have been an example to us and pray that we might be an example to others. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for carers, for home helps and social workers, especially for those in the front line of the COVID-19 response. We pray for all whose vocation is cut short by sickness or disease. We pray for all whose lives are restricted by poverty or oppression. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We are glad for all who have fulfilled their calling and have entered into the fullness of your kingdom. We pray that, like them, 
we may follow you forever. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. These prayers we gather up and join to the prayers of Jesus, saying as he has taught us, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup we bless is a sharing in Christ's blood. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. Gracious God, we give thanks that bread broken brings wholeness, that wine poured out replenishes. And so we give you thanks that you feed all who reach out hands to receive your son Jesus, and you feed too those hearts which reach out to receive what hands cannot. May we who have a share in the taking of the bread and the cup express that gift in the sharing of our lives that others might also share in Jesus. Send us forth in the power of your Holy Spirit to give ourselves in love until your entire human family is gathered at your table, glorifying and praising you in the name of Christ. Amen. Go into the world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, help the afflicted, support the weak. Honour all people, love and serve the Lord, celebrating the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. charge to keep I have, I want to glorify, and ever I soul to save me, I God on high, to serve the present age, my calling to fulfill. My master's will. Amen.
Jesus. Hey.